Welcome everybody to our Africa conversation series. I'm here with uh, Walid Siti today. Um, really excited to have you here. Um, I'm going to read your bio really quickly to facilitate our introduction and we'll get right into the questions. Um, Walid was born in 1954 in the city of Dahok in Iraqi Kurdistan. After graduating in 1976 from the Institute of Fine Arts in Baghdad, Siti left Iraq to continue his arts education in Slovenia before seeking political asylum in 1984 in the UK, where he lives and works. Formerly trained in printmaking, Siti works extensively in a variety of mediums, including video installation, 3D works, works on paper, and painting. His works traverse a complex terrain of memory and loss, while at the same time offering an acute insight into a world which for him has been a place of constant change. The narrative of his experience of a life lived far from but still deeply emotionally connected to the place of one's birth is one he shares with many exiles. He takes inspiration from the cultural heritage of his native land that is crossed with militarized borders and waves of migration. Um, Walid, it is such a pleasure to have you today. Thank you very much, <clears throat> and thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, yeah so uh, I'm going to get us started with like a, zooming back to your start. Um, can you tell me a little, I know we talked a little bit before, but can you tell me a, li a little bit about what your upbringing was like, um, what it was like growing up in the uh, city you were in, and um, what images were those that were like most salient and most um, present for you? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I'm born in the city of Dog. Um, I mean, it used to be when I was young, a uh, very small town, actually, or even you can call it a, a big village. <laughs> but now it's grown to half a million. And the city is uh, surrounded by mountains and um, its uh, inhabitants are mainly Kurdish. And it was um, like a meeting point between the, the central government and the Kurdish liberation movement when I was growing up as a child and when I went to school. So I did my school, um, primary school and intermediate school, not secondary there, before I went to Baghdad as a our student. My my memories of the place, of course, is uh, relate a lot. I mean, it's, it's so connected to where uh, I am from the family I'm from, and how brought uh, in what family I brought, which was very politically conscious. My father, we didn't see much of our father when we were young because he was politically engaged in political activities, or he was in prison a few times. Then uh, he had to go to mountain with the Kurds. And um, so me and my sibling and my mother, we have to earn a living um, um, beside doing our school, which was very hard at that time. And uh, the situation was really grim. And because, he, as I said, we are um, bordering the, the, um, th that point of confrontation. So you hear the bombs and the plane uh, and uh, destruction, so much of the destruction and, and, and humiliation, uh, suppression, and many, many of... Uh, of, of these um, images that uh, stayed in my mind until today, actually. I know it was like quite a heavy childhood to come up with. And I wanted to ask a little bit more, you know, you're saying the city was surrounded by mountains and the mountains are uh, a recurring theme in your work. And I wanted to ask, uh, what did the mountains mean to you growing up? Were they things that you resented because your family was kind of like your dad was always in the mountains or was it something that you always thought was majestic? Like, how did you feel about the mountains as you grew up? I mean, the mountain came to my work much later, really, when I was looking to an alternative form of expression, expressing my, my, my work, expressing uh, in my work, actually. So the mountain and other um, element of um, man-made or nature-made like uh, as well, uh, a reference from Mesopotamian uh, uh, culture or civilization like the ziggurat or, or the towers or many monuments around, even in our city, there are many uh, in the mountains, there are many uh, I'll call it, uh, remnants of the Assyrian uh, or uh, Assyrian art and as well as some settlement from previous time. So all this had an impact really on me. I mean, uh, so it was not uh, just the beginning I went into mountain. It, the mountain, as I said, come much later in my work. 
And of course, the mountain is one, one part of my identity, as, as many of them. But part of my identity as a Kurd and mountain mean so much uh, to the Kurds as a place of refuge and um, sourcing water and um, fruits and so on. Yeah. So have that uh, kind of um, many readings to it. Yeah. Um, and then what inspired you to move from Baghdad to Slovenia to pursue your um, education? Yeah, I mean, um, early in my primary school, I was spotted to be in having some keen interest in art and craft. So my art teacher uh, um, encouraged me to join the, or to apply for art school in Baghdad. And that time, there was the only art school in Baghdad uh, beside the Academy of Fine Art. Uh, and so I was at a young age when I joined the, the, the course there. Um, and in the last two years of the study, I focused on printmaking. Uh, the, the atmosphere was there. It was an amazing atmosphere, dynamic and very creative because the teacher were treating us like most of them like a friend. And they were very encouraging us to work. And so uh, it was very productive years for me and as well a, a new place in my life, really, because it was like a mini Iraq there where mm. students come from young from all parts of Iraq uh, mm. to, to live together for five years and work together. So um, I have any lasting memories from that time, and especially with the art scene in that time in Baghdad was uh, very uh, live and uh, strong. Uh, and that was inherited from previous uh, decades of um, uh, uh, initiative by artists and architects. Um, and there were many groups and many artists who initiated, uh, um, you know, uh, different movement and, and uh, many galleries opened, many initiatives. And as well, there was a, a Kolbenkian Art Center where, where many exhibitions hold uh, by Iraqi and international artists. And so the whole atmosphere in Baghdad was very kind of uh, um, interesting and very, I would say, useful to us, for us young uh, people. But uh, on top of that, I would say that the, generally this, uh, the, the teaching was being conventional and we were not very kind of, um, um, say, pushed to, to be more kind of into research on, or as well our English was very limited or no English. So whatever material or references available like books, we were not able to much understand what was going on. So we sort of deprived from what was happening internationally. It wasn't until I came to Yugoslavia or ex-Yugoslavia to Slovenia that I, the more opportunity was open to me. And that I came to Slovenia because I could not continue my art study in, in, in Iraq because there was only one academy after the, my art school. And there, there it was a condition that you have to be a member of a, a ruling uh, party, which is Ba'ath Party, and I wasn't. And plus, I didn't want to go and serve the military service as, as was compulsory those days. So we find a way with few friends, uh, or same generation, a way to get a seat or, or an, uh, yeah, a seat in, in study in, in Ljubljana and Slovenia. So in 76, when I finished this art school in Baghdad, I went to Ljubljana. And one, the first year where we, we spent it on learning the language was, was very tough, very intensive, and because we, we didn't speak even one word of the language, but uh, was uh, was okay that the first year after we finished the language, I, I went to see my family. Uh, but after that, the situation in Iraq got much worse as uh, Saddam, uh, Saddam came to power uh, within his party and became an absolute ruler. So I didn't go back to Iraq until 16 years later. So. Um, on the note of education, I know that you were originally trained as a printmaker. What drew you to printmaking and um how was your primary education in printmaking yeah, like? Yeah. And as I said before, in the uh, last two years of uh, fine, um, School of Fine Art in Baghdad, I, was, I went to the film, uh, I mean, printmaking, sorry. And because it was a new medium, I think it was very interesting. And as well, you, um, you use your hand and you use different material. And I was very attracted to the idea. Um, and plus, uh, in printmaking, um, you can express some very kind of uh, definite lines and tones and expressions, mm -hmm. medium expression. And uh, that, because as I said, I was politically, uh, I, I come from a political family and I was interested to express idea of 
you know, poor people, deprived people, sad moments, so on like that. And in printmaking, I thought it'd give me that opportunity to experience those ideas. So when I came to Ljubljana, I, of course, I, I immediately applied for a printmaking course, uh, which was, Ljubljana, of course, is very famous internationally uh, as a, one hub, uh, amazing, important place for developing out, uh, because they have an um, uh, international biennial, which has been running for, I don't know, 50 years or more. So our teachers so in, in the Academy of Fine Art in Slovenia are the all very well, uh, I would say, uh, qualified. And uh, we benefited uh, immensely from their uh, knowledge and, and, uh, and the experience we had in the Academy. Um, on, on the note of printmaking, I wanted to draw our attention to one particular work. Um, this is the Seven Towers, which is part of, uh, part of a series um, you made in 2013. Um, can you explain a little bit about like what your process was in creating this particular work and like why um, you have this like spiraling tower, but then it's like um, superimposed with a bunch of like lines that are crisscrossing? Like, can you walk us through a little bit of like the process of making this work and um, the different components that you hope, you know, are salient in it? So you were saying about uh, seven towers? Yeah, the, the uh, artwork on the screen. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, that was come as well with a much later um, period in my work when I was uh, using different material to express ideas, again, related to what was going on. The, 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 the period of transformation, which we are still witnessing in Iraq and in Kurdistan um, in particular. Uh, so I was interested in kind of uh, any of the rapid development is coming up. Um, so the Seven Towers, it was like a um, synonymous with many other parallel area of the region where all are based on petrodollars uh, economy, they all into kind of building towers. So I thought uh, this seven is uh, kind of, I, I couldn't eat with, with uh, something universal or, you know, that it, it could uh, apply to every uh, other place that have a similar condition. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, and Kurdistan at the time, which have a, was, was more peaceful than other parts of Iraq, was as well into this kind of um, building towers uh, like Dubai or Uzbekistan or Turkey or, or maybe Lebanon or any other or other um, place or region. So I thought uh, the this tower somehow expressed this kind of uh, commonality of a new phase of development, rapid development, uh, that uh, based on building towers. On, on the account of uh, other heritages and, and um, uh, you know, traditions of building. Um, is there, um, out of curiosity, is there some um, overlap or some interest that you have between like towers and mountains as like man-made versus like uh, nature-made ways of like ascension and climbing? Or is that something um, that like isn't, a theme in your work and isn't something you're particularly interested in? I mean, they have, I mean, especially maybe I would say more between towers and mountains, because in both cases, uh, like I'm very, as you might have seen in my work, I'm very much occupied with the, the, the spiral minaret of Samara, which uh, is a tower, uh, amazing tower, which I managed to visit two years ago, or three years, uh, 2019. And I did a video about it. And uh, it's for me similar to climbing a mountain, uh, both they have kind of a wider base, then you slowly you, you climb with a, with a big effort to reach the top of the, the summit, where things become more clear and, and there's a horizon or a, a huge landscape in the front view. It allows you to, to make this kind of connection between you and, and the rest of the world or your or immediate surrounding. And uh, as well as a place where you can contemplate uh, more ideas of, of wisdom or, or, or enlightenment, as well uh, for others, maybe a climbing tower for, uh, I mean, where, where is it uh, like a tower in time of uh, building a tower? I would say it's more time, a place of, of uh, leaving a legacy or, 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 or saying establishing a, a, a notion of, of um, power uh, as an owner of that building that uh, we built a tower uh, to climb uh, or to uh, leave a legacy uh, to, to say that, uh, uh, that I am, can impose something 
or I can uh, um, establish a, 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 a different type of relationship between me as a powerful person and the rest of the people. So for me, this kind of um, uh, shapes that have all somehow connected, but with a different maybe interpretation and different uh, uh, application, yeah. Um, on the note of climbing, uh, I'm going to jump a bit because this is a yeah. much more recent work. Um, we're looking at 2021 Nowhere to Climb. It's an installation in the city of Dahok, um, which is public art installation, which we can talk about as well. Yeah. Um, but you're just talking right now about this, like active climbing, um, and now you're kind of like countering it with this idea of like nowhere to climb. Um, what, well, I'll, I'll build the questions up as we go, but like, let's start at the basic of like, what does it mean for you to climb? Like, why is climbing an act that you're interested in? I think, uh, uh, uh in addition to what if I've said about climbing that, um, uh... And, and actually, the, 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 uh, the, the use of towers and mountains and so on, uh, early in my work, it, it was looking for a form that will uh, uh, call it, inform my ideas uh, away from a, a direct interpretation or presentation. So it is like a poetical or philosophical idea that I climb or anybody can climb or who climbs in a, in a spiral uh, on the spider minaret, for example, Samara or a mountain, that you start from very wide um, point and you slowly this uh, circle become narrow and narrow until you reach the the top, and and mm -hmm. there then you you have to uh, descend again. You have to come down. Uh, yeah, sorry, ascend again. You have to come down. You have to have a humility and uh, and and understand that you have to take the same road come back again so it is for me this kind of uh, talking about a cycle and uh, the recurrent of ideas or recurrent of things happening in our life about life and death about um, you know birth and death or something like that yeah so that's what for me generally i was uh, interested in yeah and, then, and, and i took about public art sorry i had a question public yeah. art yeah i mean uh, in 2019 i initiated um uh, uh, doing an, a, a, a public art festival in the uh, center of city of uh, the Hook, um, to bring art to, to the public rather than public going to the art galleries. Though we have one only one art gallery, which is a bit um, a bit uh, a dismal situation, but uh, so I thought it still it'd be better that I bring art to the public. So I initiated the idea, and um, a few young artists were keen on the idea, and we worked together to. And then we were many, but then there were seven of us left, and we did this, um, yeah, this uh, public art manifestation. And my work, which, uh, as you mentioned before, uh, titled uh, "Climbing to Nowhere," is, uh, is uh, I try to express an idea of uh, of what uh, the, what call it, the, the the solution for the young, young generation. I mean, if you ask any second person, young person, everybody want to leave uh, Kurdistan or leave Iraq. Because of the you know the countless uh, um, disaster event happen and and uh, mismanagement and the corruption and so on and so this kind of uh, disillusionment with what happened and and kind of sense of helplessness what the future can bring so they all everybody want to escape and go plus and somehow some a sense of or oh, false dream is being created that everybody will, will be able to 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 climb and and reach reach. A, a, uh, better stage in their life or in their prosperity of their family and so on. But actually, no, there's a very limited uh, space for for uh, uh, um, for people, to, especially young people. So I, uh, the idea of climbing nowhere is, is, is sort of um, is an ironic idea of some how to that you are invited to climb, but you get nowhere because there's just a kind of a dream. Yeah. Um, since this is a public art installation, this is never one of my favorite questions to ask, but um, how has people's reception to that artwork been, especially since it's your hometown and especially since it's commenting on uh, a, an issue that feels like very personal and very um, acute for a lot of the people who live in the city? I mean, it was quite positive. Um, beside the, the the idea as well, the material I've used is I used a very raw material, um, uh, wood that mm -hmm. I uh, it was cut, but of course we bought it and we assembled it in there. 
And, and so the ladders that were all, um, a bit, uh, you know, compr comprised of uh, a group of ladders that uh, made the immediate connection with people because a ladder is very kind of common uh, tool used, especially in the, in the countryside. And as well as a, a universal, uh, you know, uh, symbol. Uh, so it's very easy to communicate. And, and with, the, with the title uh, with the, and, and, and the statement I made, it was very easy to communicate. And, and people were very positive how they react and how they understood. I think it was quite uh, easy to, to, to engage, yeah. Um, I'm going to, again, jump around a bit in time um, and move us to 2016, 2017. You have this work called The Black Tower. Um, I'll, I'll take this piece a little bit, bit by bit. I know that you're yeah. employing toy figurines, which is something that you're um, particularly interested in, like soldier yeah. figurines. Yeah. Um, can you speak a little bit about what motivated you to start using this particular ready-made object and what ready-made objects mean to you? Yeah. I mean, before using a uh, uh, you know, plastic figurine, I was using other ready-made material, very cheap font and uh, material. But the, the soldier figurine came in more with, with uh, what was happening in the area since 2014 with the appearance of the, uh, the ISIS in the area and, uh, and the involvement of I call it uh, regional and international forces from all around the world into area. So for me, the, the, the landscape was scattered with a small uh, bit of, which of course they were human, but from far you wouldn't know who's who. And mm. uh, there were so many groups involved. And um, of course, uh, it was very kind of uh, traumatic, of course, and dramatic and was very painful to see all the destruction and, and, and pain happen. And, and, and I mean, it occurred, especially to some group, especially Yazidi, occurred for the Syrian and the breakup of so many things. Uh, and uh, and uh, it was very kind of devastating for, uh, for everyone. So I, I used this kind of, uh, kind of uh, called dismantled or broken tower, uh, mm -hmm. which was infested with, with uh, soldier figurine, like um, kind of, uh, yeah, like some sort of uh, uh, rotten or or being in, in uh, yeah, mm. or, or yeah, I mean, with, with this kind of soldier figure as, as, as something where we can be disagree, uh, we call it dismantling and um, we call it uh, uh, dis disintegrating some uh, um, forms, which was part of heritage. So uh, again, I was a part of the, the form is, is, is uh, taken from uh, Minaret of Samara again as a symbol for me, as a symbol of uh, beautiful architecture and heritage, how this happened. And because in Samara itself as well, the tower was, was bombed because as ISIS was taking uh, position uh, as a sniper and the American bombed the, the top. Uh, luckily, it was not a big damage was uh, sort of, but uh, so this came to mind. And plus, as I said before, the, the, the scattered uh, landscape of soldiers and different forces from all type of um, background and, and interest uh, representing this kind of very complex uh, uh, situation we were witnessing in the area. Yeah. And then can you speak a little bit more about your material choices in this yes, yeah. work? I know like we're, we're looking at some clay, we're looking at some wood, like yeah. why these materials in particular for, for this artwork? I mean, we have, uh, because everything is because I'm, uh, when I start to practice my art coming to London uh, as a refugee. I have no much income. I was, so I was always interested in finding some uh, around the material, use material, the cheaper material. And this uh, notion continued to stay with me. So in uh, 2014 or even before and after, I was looking for any material which was ready made, as you're saying, and, and cheap to find and uh, not costly. So I, I found uh, the sticks uh, or straw. And it's sort of sort of figurine, and and as well uh, for a while, I I have to say as well to mention that very important when I was in London, I was struggling, so I worked as a decorator, so I used a lot of plaster and things like that. So I was very equipped and knowledgeable about how using this or mending a window or a chair or a broken wall, I mean damaged wall or something like that. So that came very handy for me later when I start to do things with with vadim and cheap material. So for me, uh, it was very uh, satisfying how I could manipulate some very cheap material, uh, transform them, and use them as a tool to express some ideas, yeah. 
Um, and we're seeing in these works, um, and then I'm, I'm putting another work on the screen, but that the the colors that you lean towards are, are black and white. And I know that there's something that uh, is really important to you, like this idea of like black and white thinking, the paralyzation that comes from like living in a, or experiencing something very high stakes or very um, jarring. Um, can you speak a little bit more about why these two colors and how these kind of like um, colors influence your practice or your artistic philosophy? I mean, I mean the monochrome uh, uh, you know, palette is is very uh, you know go back very uh, go back in my my crisis from maybe from even back that. I mean, uh, when I was in school, in primary school, I was as well interested in calligraphy, but I never took calligraphy seriously. But calligraphy will teach you to, to be just uh, lines. And the printmaking in Baghdad, again, just lines and expression, black and white, mainly. Then I came to Ljubljana again when I was studying graphic again. But that was parallel with what was going on back, back seen from what I witnessed uh, from tragic news in, in, in Iraq and Kurdistan the countless war disaster that uh, it 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 i would say it encouraged no encouraged me it it uh, took me to to that position that to express idea in black one because i felt there was everything very kind of dramatic very uh, i would say one sided was all black or white so i continued this um, notion of of working even even after i have left printmaking to do like um, uh, painting like uh, the painting we see is a uh, working canvas or the thing uh, the work you showed before the the the, the tower uh, that notion continued with me because I felt uh, the background uh, idea which uh, relate to disaster will continue in black and white uh, so the, the the trauma was continuing the the contrasting uh, uh, situation continuing with between death and life between war and, uh, you know, destruction, building, uh, construction, deconstruction, building and, uh, you know, and uh, ruining things. So, so that, um, uh, I call it formula continued and how that's how have an impact in my work and continue to be. Uh... I'm going to shift the conversation a bit. I, I uh, saw in the chat people want to move a little bit more contemporary, so I'll do that, but we'll, we'll pause here first. Um, we have this work from 2011, um, which was part of the Venice Biennale for Iodox uh, yeah. Pavilion. Um, you are incorporating the Zab River um, using Maylar Mirror. Um, can you explain a little bit, like this one has a very different feel to your other works, yeah, which is why yeah, I was particularly drawn yeah, to it, right? It has a, um, a different color. Uh, it, it isn't, it is still very lines based, but it does have a little bit more fluidity to it. Um, can you explain a little bit about like how this particular piece came to be and um, yeah, yeah, and how you're documenting this river? Yeah, I mean, um, uh, for people maybe who don't know that, I mean, the, uh, Iraq was absent from <clears throat> Venice Biennale for a long time after, you know, the years of wars and sanction and so on. But uh, with the initiative of a few friends and entrepreneurs, Iraqi, uh, we took the initiative to uh, re-enter the Biennale in 2011. And uh, there was a creator based in Rome uh, with a friend artist who chose the, uh, the, the theme of water as a main theme for the exhibition, for our Iraqi, sorry, for uh, Iraqi pavilion exhibition, yeah. And uh, so we worked on the idea, and I thought uh, the idea of, of uh, using the river, the uh, Tigris River, um, um, or both rivers actually, because I, I call it a meso, because they are uh, related to Mesopotamia. And I, I saw the river as a mirror, my, my, uh, I use my uh, mirror to, to reflect the idea of water. So, but uh, it's, this water is being stretched by um, both sides from everywhere. Uh, and it's um, connected with a very uh, thin line of, um, what they call it, fishing line. So to, to create a tension um, uh, of demand and pressure and what the, the, the both sides of the river from where it comes from, uh, in, uh, in, in from Turkey down to Kurdistan and to, down to the south of Iraq, how all this area witnessing uh, tremendous uh, trauma and, and, and destruction. So the, the red, I thought, will um, help me to, to, to create more attention on this line and this stretching of lines to create that, um, uh, you know, tension and, and uh, express the idea 
in a different way. Yeah. 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 Um, I think that's really fascinating, you know, like th- this, this use of lines and um, trying to add that like natural kind of like context to it. Um, I'm going to uh, move us towards, I know you had a recent work called Techscape um, in October, 2021 um, in Exeter. Um, this is, that feels very different. Um, we're, oh, sorry, hold on. Oh, updating the screen. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I wanted to ask like this, I, w- I was looking at how you were making this work and, you know, it's, it's very motivated by cuneiform. It's very, it has like a very round feel. Um, it, I don't have a picture, but it's beautiful um, when it's lit up um, at night. And I wanted to hear like, what, what, what motivated this change both in, um, object like both in like material yeah. um as well as like the change in like the um specific like approach and and feel of the work i mean uh, maybe i should mention before i go uh, i mean down i mean i explain more about this work that uh you might have seen from different work you've shown tonight and other work uh, i have that i don't have a very coherent style in my work I mean, uh, before it used to be, of course, in the 80s, maybe 90s, then I was open to idea because uh, London offered me, especially London offered me a new uh, horizon, how to deal, how to see, how to learn, how to use. And I was, I started to be open to all different uh, ideas and materials. And um, I, as well, my uh, practice uh, shifted from kind of um, 2Ds, like uh, work on paper uh, only, which I continue, uh, which I love and continue being an important part of my practice, or from painting or printmaking to more 3D works. So, and as well, I, I accepted the idea that um, uh, it depends on the theme and the idea and the place that uh, many work could be, have to be site specific and, uh, and open to material that would serve the purpose serve the idea which I want to convey. So in this work, uh, why I went to, this is actually made from form, cylinder forms. Yeah, the idea was uh, an open call from a museum or a museum in Exeter to, for artists to make application um, with the idea of being uh, inspired by some, a part of their uh, collection in the museum. So I went to Exeter and I find they have a small collection of Mesopotamian pieces, some tablets and some cylinders and so on. So I took this as a starting point. I, I did some research, extra research and ideas. So I thought, what about an uh, uh, interesting idea that I do this uh, uh, composition of, uh, I think, about uh, 90 cylinders uh, with conform uh, 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 writing. Um, that that like an idea of repatriating these um, cylinders in the museum or other museum, uh, taking a journey back to where they come from, to Iraq. So the the curator was happy to agree on the idea that uh, we put this uh, work uh, on on a platform in the water, uh, and uh, with this idea in mind. And then. Um... I'm also just curious, like why a platform in the water? Was there something particular about that or was it just like the way that it ended up being exhibited or? No, no, I mean, as I was saying before that um, this river is connected to the sea. Uh, it ended up in the sea. Uh, and so this could be metaphorically um, explained or, or being um, uh, uh, thought of that this is, uh, uh, beginning of a journey of repatriating of or going back where it they belong. So this is a symbolic idea, just shelf idea. So the river to the sea and back uh, a long journey back to where they come from. So that was the idea. Yeah. Looking at another work, we also see this. This this isn't in cuneiform, but we're also seeing that kind of like imprinted words on a material. We're still seeing something going vertically. Um, upwards. Can you explain a little bit about like the history of this particular work and is there any um, relationship to the previous work or do they feel like very distinct projects in your mind? I mean, this is um, a second version of another work I did in Amsterdam. I don't know if you have um, a uh, uh, triangle one, if you have to show, if you have. I think you have it. Yeah, I remember you, you showed me uh, with the same. Oh, uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. So okay. this is the original. 
So mm. what happened here, uh, I was invited uh, by accident. I was very happy to be invited by um, a, a gallery or, or um, public, I mean, uh, art institution called Frame a Frame uh, to, to be part of uh, P- Public Art Amsterdam 2017, I think it was. So I, uh, and uh, they seen another uh, sample of this work, but in a different format. And I, so I suggested this um, uh, composition of course, they were happy. I mean, and uh, and I uh, and I, I formed a, 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 I would call it a, a workshop uh, to give uh, this block to a group of uh, young uh, volunteers to carve this name. There are names of uh, female woman, Kurdish woman, and they are all kind of uh, connected with the name of nature or flowers or or struggle. So it's all somehow related to. Uh, uh, Kurdish uh, names of women, female uh, names. So I want to something make an, a tribute to uh, the, the 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 suffering and the, what we'll call it the struggle of the Kurdish woman, because uh, and I I title it um, uh, a monument to unsung because I felt uh, in in this kind of uh, series of war and disaster we've been witnessing for many decades, the, the women are sort of being marginalized or being taken out of the account how much they bear or the, the consequences of all these disasters as, as mothers, as sisters, mm-hmm. and as wives. So uh, where the decision is made by man uh, to go to this uh, uh, conflict, while women have to bear the consequences. So I thought I attribute this monument, I mean, this monument, this idea of monument to them. So I put this uh, woman, uh, woman uh, Kurdish name on, on the uh, card on these blocks. So this, uh, the other image uh, was uh, you showed me before is uh, like a tower is, is driven from the same idea. Uh, just was much easier to do this. So uh, we did this, uh, but with the same uh, idea behind. Yeah. I want to talk a little bit about this, like, question of like distance where um, I'm, I'm seeing this kind of like play out a little bit here, but um, I'll, I'll take us back a bit before moving forward. I know that you said that when you had visited your family uh, after your time in Slovenia, you hadn't returned for about 16 years. Um, can you, was that, was that gap voluntary? Can you talk a little bit more about that gap and what that experience was? I think um, I mentioned um, briefly that uh, I come uh, uh, from a politically conscious family. And so in Baghdad, uh, I was taking this line and that's why I couldn't go to academic fine art. When I was Slovenia in Slovenia, again, I was involved in political um, you know, activism as a student, of course. We couldn't do much, but uh, I was into that. And so that was... Uh, a, a point of a contentious point with, with the Iraqi government. Uh, so we we put me and my colleagues we put on the blacklist that we could not return. So if only I went back after I finished language first year. Then I couldn't go back again because of my involvement in that. And we continue, I continued uh, this line uh, even when I came back and when I came to London as a refugee. Uh, my and, and my family have to denounce me and to, to say that we don't know where our son is. We don't have a contact with him because it was um, uh, they were being harassed uh, over and over again. Uh, mm-hmm. So I didn't want to go back. I couldn't go anyway. I was worried that I go and I might be having a, a difficulty or be in prison or something like that. And when I came to London as a refugee again, I couldn't go until an opportunity arrived when the north of Iraq, Kurdish area, became a safe haven that I um, managed to go and visit my family uh, illegally through Tehran. I went to Tehran, then I take a bus to the border. And I, with a group of refugees, I entered Iraq after 16 years. When I entered my town, it was a different town. I left uh, 16 years before, mm-hmm. and, and my family as well. It was uh, amazing to see them, a very emotional moment, and to hear all the stories of uh, how they've been through all these times, um, you know, the wars and and uh, when Exodus going to the mountain during the winter uh, the year before, and people had lost, my grandmother lost there as well. So, so many uh, things that I had to see and hear and witness uh, was very kind of, uh, as well, having a strong memory in my, 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 my life and as well uh, had the impact on my work as well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Can you can you speak a bit more about how it impacted your work and w- what the process of like making art when you're so far away feels like? I mean, um, 
the, the many wars uh, happened in Iraq, especially the long uh, Iraq Iran war, which took uh, eight years. It was uh, kind of for us uh, people who are ag against it. It was a sort of uh, senseless uh, conflict that um, uh, inflicted so much damage to the Iraqi human resources. I mean, young people, uh, old people, to the uh, to the um, uh, to the, the the natural resources and the money spent. Uh, who benefited from it is only the um, Western countries who poured uh, all uh, stock of all the um, uh, weapon uh, in, in the war. Uh, and uh, then you see all these images of through the um, TV screen, photographs in newspaper far from there. And you feel these people are, your people are being uh, subjected to this, uh, uh, you know, this uh, horrible situation of war and, and uh and violence. So this, uh, and then the, the invasion of Kuwait happened. Then the uh, American invasion happened. The, 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 then the, uh, I, as well, the, the attack on the um, uh, town of Halabja by chemical weapon in '86. And all these were kind of uh, co uh, countless, uh, uh, co continuous pressure. No pressure, but kind of reminder where you are, who I, who you are, where you come from, who you left behind. And this kind of uh, sense of belonging and sense as well of of uh, relating to a place to people that uh, are in under co uh, continuous pressure and mm -hmm. and struggle to survive only really and uh, so that have an impact and that's how, well, how my work was always related to what was going on there until uh, until now actually yeah um on that note of like Contemporary, I know that before the interview, we were talking a bit about how you've been going back a bit more and engaging with public art and having more of a mentorship role to artists there. Can you speak a bit more about like what that process has been? And um, I know you said you're going yeah. next week. So it, what, what's... yeah, I mean, uh, you know, uh, as I said, my art always, I felt that I have to express something to do with a place. Uh, how much I've been successful, I don't know. It doesn't matter how much or not. That's for other people to say. But at the same time, I feel I want to be of use. My art have to see to say something, and my activity have to be of use. Of uh, so I felt maybe I could diversify my effort, my energy, the experience I have to pass it to uh, younger people. So last few years, I had the opportunity that I could travel uh, more to th that area, and economically I had less stress. So I can afford to travel and, and to stay there. So I started to collaborate, initiate a project, art project with youth um, and uh, even older generation, newer generation. And mm -hmm. it is very challenging and very difficult, but but I find it very satisfying because uh, on, on the light of lack of um, institutional support, cultural support, um, there are desperate need of people like me to pass uh, my, my knowledge to them. Mm -hmm. uh, it is not easy, but I'm very happy to, to do to continue to do that. And uh, I am doing so many projects there. And soon I'm going to go back and, and I'm, I'm helping a group of youth people to to have a, an exhibition of photography. And I help to establish uh, a cinema club for young people. I did two public art editions. And as well, I'm doing every three months and a public art sculpture in front of all the gallery we have in the center of the town. So that's how I feel. I, I, I hope I'm able to contribute more, just not with my art uh, practice, but more as well with my energy and experience I have here. Um, on that note, and um, following up on Zainab's question in the Q&A, um, she's interested in your recent work um, after your visit to Mosul. Can, can you speak a bit about that and um, how your work has evolved or shifted or... Yes. Um, change in form yeah. due to this visit. I mean, I, I was um, happy I mean, and sad to be able to visit uh, other parts of Iraq because uh, since 92, when I, after, as I said, 16 years of being deprived of visiting my family and place I lived and uh, um, know that 2019, I was able, uh, but I was able to visit uh, that part, but, but not able to visit other parts of Iraq which I have as well um, very long memories and uh, very precious memory from the place. So I was able to visit Baghdad and Mosul uh, on 2019, and as well Samarra, where uh, the Minaret of Samarra uh, stand. 
And in Mosul, I, I found uh, the, the devastation was uh, kind of uh, difficult to apprehend by any 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 way. Really, is beyond ex description. So I did um, a series of of videos and photos, and uh, but I could not compete with the amazing uh, photos that other journalists have taken during ISIS uh, war and and uh, American war and so on. So I come with this um, simple idea of. Uh, uh, of of uh, talking about uh, the devastation with the uh, with the idea of connecting to the Tigris River because uh, Mosul is is uh, on the Tigris River and the the worst affected part of Mosul, the Kula Suraj Khana, is 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 uh, just uh, alongside the river. So I took um, a few short uh, stills and then I connect this shot as a as a long shot and then taking them in my film. With with uh, with 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 an idea come from uh, a lock in London where I, during COVID I used to go around and I saw these two water coming down from to to a side and meeting in the water it it, it reminded of most, the two great rivers uh, so I start from there and 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 um, I then I uh, took a reference uh, a beautiful poem by a Kurdish uh, poet from. Uh, Turkey, his name Muhammad Uzam, and 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 uh, it's uh, called uh, the cry of the, of Tigris. So I used uh, this text uh, over late over the, the the still, which was slowly moving, uh, starting from the the, the lock in London, in, uh, slowly overlaying over the uh, the image of uh, Suraj Khanna on the bank of uh, Riga Tigers, with a beautiful poem going over it. I thought. Um, uh, it was interesting and a very yeah satisfying at the same time uh, to to say something about what I witnessed. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I want to be conscious of time, so I'm going to ask one more question before I move into the quick Q and A and then the open Q and A. Um, I know that you had mentioned that you're working on a monograph with Nat, who's on the call, um, and I wanted to hear. Um, I know you, you wanted to talk a bit about it um, with regards to like the process and um, what you're looking forward to with regards yeah. to the monogram. I mean, we were talking about um, uh, I call it different stages of my um, art practices, different style, different cities, different schools, uh, different memories and places I've visited and experienced. So I thought it was a good idea to document that in a book and in 2017, uh, the wonderful Nat Mola was uh, willing to be my editor to initiate the idea of um, um, doing this book, uh, which will uh, which which present all stage of my life. and it's already published actually, uh, but it uh, unfortunately was done uh, during COVID, and uh, we had as well few texts by uh, Nat and uh, Zainab, Dr. Zainab. Uh, thank grateful to her, A beautiful piece, and by uh, Venetia Porter. And and by by Sarah, so the, all um, with many different um, uh, stage of my work, and uh, I think it was divided into three section, uh, and it's uh, published, but it's still not been launched. I'm looking forward to do it hopefully this year in London, but uh, I'm taking initiative as well to do it in 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 Baghdad. By the way, uh, when uh, the Portuguese was there, when Dr. Zaina Bahrani was uh, working on some archaeological archaeological site. In, in Kurdistan, uh, I used the opportunity to invite her to a uh, symbolic as well launch uh, a book in my city of birth uh, last year, which I was very, very pleased uh, about that and pleased that she was there with me. Yeah. Oh. Um, I'm going to move us to the quick Q&A. Um, uh, what are you reading or watching right now? Um, oh, a lot of films. Yeah. yeah, because uh, you know I have a partner, um, um, a wonderful partner, and we both into spend some time together and we watch films. So we've been watching a lot of actually movies, old uh, Egyptian movies from sixties, mm -hmm. uh, which is amazing, really, and uh, some other movies as, as well. Uh, like uh, we, though I've seen it before, uh, we we re uh, we re saw it again. The missing was amazing. Of course, it's um, somehow. As well, um, you know, relate to what I've been talking about of the, about uh, the laws and uh, violence, uh, and uh, you know, the changes happened. Yeah, 
and then Ter Friedling, uh, I was reading some poem by a Kurdish uh, poet. Uh, I want to do some illustration on, on, he invited me to do that, yeah. yeah. Who would you love to shadow for a day, past or present? Well, well my partner. Um, what do most people misunderstand about your work? Oh, yeah, maybe I think for some they would say that maybe I'm more uh, not very kind of obvious uh, ideas of nationalism in there. Yeah. For other, maybe I'm too Western. For some, uh, maybe less Kurdishness. For other, maybe less Iraqiness. Maybe I'm this or that. But I'm all of them and none of them really at the same time. Uh, I would say my my identity is very uh, group of things, not just one. Um, yeah, one one single one. No, yeah. Um, and then the last question is, uh, whose work do you admire and are inspired by? All right. I mean, I, l I love uh, William Kentridge. There was a great exhibition of his recently in Royal Academy in London. Uh, it's very inspiring. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I respect him Im immensely. Yeah. Just wanted to um, add Walid's Instagram here. Um, it's Walid City on. And with that, I think that concludes our interview. Great. Can I just say th <clears throat> thank you, Afikra, for the opportunity and thank you for everyone who've been with us tonight. Yeah. Thank you all for coming. <laughs>